Alright everybody, this is a, a new style of video I'm doing here. Well, it's not really new, but I haven't done one of these in a long time, and I really haven't done much of it. So as you can see here, we've got all the original Pokemon, and we are going to do a tier list. I would do them all, but that would be an entirely longer video. And yeah, so we're going to rank all these, and we're going to rank them by the family line, mostly because... It's kind of weird to say, oh, Machoke's better than Machop, but it's really not that different. I consider them like one unit, unless there's like something else that would entail that it, they're not. But in this case, we're going to rank them. Well, I am going to rank them, and you're going to watch. You like it? Well, stay tuned. I might do more of these. If not, you can dislike it. Whatever floats your boat. I am basing this on my personal experience, obviously, based off how good they are in game, design, and presence in other media. Like, they're prominent, like, say, the anime or the card game. And very interesting there. That might give them a boost. Anyway, let's start with the uh, starters, obviously. Where else to start but with the starters? And we've got the uh, Bulbasaur line first. And they're really, like I said, the, how can you say, like, oh, Bulbasaur's great, but Venusaur sucks. See how that doesn't make any sense? These guys are pretty easy S tier. So we're putting them in there. They are very useful. They have a great move pool, and the Grass Poison type from the beginning is pretty great, even though it's a little generic, especially in this generation when a bunch of the other Grass Pokemon are po these half Poison type. But yeah, other than that, they have some great stats moves and some great signature moves, and they're overall great Grass starter, even if they uh, aren't the most popular choice, which we'll get to right now. Charmander is the first Pokemon I ever chose, and it is still my favorite Pokemon to this day. I know that's very generic. But I love the Charmander line. Though, hey, if we're going to put them in order by how much I like, so I don't disregard the uh, order. Technically speaking, be Charmeleon, Charmander, and Charizard, I guess. Maybe sometimes I think Charmander is better than Charizard, but does it really matter? No, so we're going to leave it like that. Yeah, I really like the uh, Charmander line. I Since I played Fire Red all the way back when... I don't even know what that date that was. 2007? Might have been. Anyway... Yeah, I chose. I had two brothers. They chose Bulbasaur and Squirtle. I chose Charmander, and they remain our favorite Pokemon to this day, which is a, kind of a funny story. So we, I had, I would chose the one that's probably the generic, but I like all three starters. Speaking of which, Squirtle, War Turtle, and Blastoise are going up there. These are all great starters, probably the best starters of any generation. I'm not a Tefty Gen Oneer, but I do believe the Gen One has the best starters. Followed by uh, Generation 3, that is also a, a great generation for starters. There's a lot of good stars out there. I mean, they are, my, I have a personal bias for stars. I always like the way they look and how good they are in game. That's me, personally. Um, other generations, these won't be as even, but even though Charizard slash Charmander is my favorite Pokemon of all time, I still think they are very even to the other guys. Blastoise is a very good tank. Hydra pumps the crap out of people. It's a, it's a Pokemon that's used a lot in speedrunning because of how good it is. I mean, it's one of those, these are one of those things where you can't go wrong with either of these starters. They are that good. Well, now, okay, this is going to be a long video. We got our little bug Pokemon. We got Caterpie, Metapod, and Butterfree. Uh, the Caterpie line isn't, they're very nostalgic because I used them my first ever run. They sucked, but I still use them. We're going to give them like a C because they are. Caterpie is pretty noteworthy. It's, it's actually not a bad design. Also, Caterpie is a real life animal. Like a, the exact cr uh, bug it looks exactly like the Caterpie. It's like not like one of those things where like, oh, they have the new design. But no, they only took like this bug. I believe it's a caterpillar in Japan. And these really made it into a Pokemon without changing it at all. Kind of lazy, but hey. Uh, I like these guys, but they're not that interesting. You can get some good stun moves on Butterfree, I guess. But other than that, there's nothing too interesting. They were in the, they had a presence in the anime. And uh, Metapod Harden is a classic. But other than, other than that, it's not like a great Pokemon. I do going to give Weedle a line, because I always thought Beedrill was really cool. And he kind of got a little better in recent generations, thanks to his Mega Evolution. Which we won't really be talking about here because it's it could be like its own separate thing. But yeah, Mega B drill boosted up a little bit. I think its poisoning ability is a little better than Butterfree. 
I'm, they're, they're about even, but I always thought they were, he was a little cooler. So I always have a little... I've used, even though I got rid of Caterpillar after my first run, I did use a Boogie Drill more times than I care to admit. But hey, that's dumb old uh, younger Kyle. Here's one that you either hate or love, and I'm in the love category. I love the Pidgey line, and they are going in S tier because they've always been a solid backbone to any of the teams I've had. They are a... Uh, people always, I guess people don't like going for them because they're a bit generic. You can get them so easily in the game, but... A very sturdy and hard-hitting bird Pokemon, and the three evolutions just make it one of the better ones to have in your team. Even though I had a Charizard, it could fly. It was just nice to have, especially if you have a shows like a Squirtle or Bulbasaur. It's always nice to have that flyer, and they've been they're good in pretty much every generation they're in. And of course, Pidgeot got a Mega Evolution. Not that I needed it, but also just looks majestic. The hair Pidgeot and Pidgeotto have, like look at that. You can't really tell here because these are the crappy 3D models. Not that I dislike the, th the models, because some of them don't look bad, but like some of them, like, why is Blastoise so chubby here? It looks like the Generation 1 sprite. Like, some of them could be been a lot better, and they haven't really tweaked them since the Generation 6. You give Generation 6 a pass, but gener by Generation 9, you guys are still kind of using the same models. It's kind of lazy, Game Freak. Alright, now we have Rattata and Raticate. Pretty iconic. Uh, Raticate loses its purple for some reason in the design. I know some of the starters... Now starters, uh, Pokemon do that, but they make Raticate just looks it's kind of generic. It has a Hyper Fang, sure, but overall they kind of suck. They're they're unique enough to not be like a bad Pokemon, but we're not gonna give it like anything higher than that. Uh, here's a Spearow and Fearow. Spearow I think is a pretty cool design, and I'm personally not in the Spearow and Fearow camp. I think they're kind of bland. Well, especially Fearow is kind of bland. It feels like a wor worse version of Pidgeotto, not Pidgeot, the Pidgey family. Let's just say that. I've never been a big fan of these. I know some people are. I know P I no. I know my brother likes them a lot. I personally don't care for them. I used them once and I just did not care for it. I always like, I wait. I was like, every when I used it, I was like, I really wish I had my Pidgeot back. For that, I'm gonna give it an E tier. Not that it's bad, but Spearow's a cool design. But Spearow, I, I think the design's lame. Personally, I know some people get mad about that. Heckins and Narbok aren't too noteworthy in the actual game. Of course, they're noteworthy for being uh, Jesse's Pokemon in the anime. So they have that going. Arbok's a neat design, and Atkins is okay. But overall, they're not that interesting. Being pure, pure poison type isn't like the best thing in the world. Plus, he's in so many Pokemon have as a side type. And there's just better Pokemon that are at doing that. I'm going to give them the C, because I still think the designs are pretty cool. But in game, I think they're just okay. Here we got the Pikachu and Raichu family. Uh, Pikachu's good, but I think it's a little overrated, to be honest. I know, as someone who uses Charizard, I think... Well, I think Charizard's overrated, too. He's my favorite Pokemon, but I don't like seeing it get favoritism over the other starters. Like I said, I love Charizard because they're my first one, but I love these two are also great. So when they get this one gets more favoritism over these two, it feels kind of one-sided. Uh, but Pikachu, like, the fact... Mostly because it's technically the middle part of its evolution line, even though we'll just say it's the first. It getting like more special stuff like that over Raichu it always feels weird, especially since Raichu is always better than Pikachu. It's how it goes. It'd be like if they gave a bunch of special forms to Charmeleon. <laughs> you know? You know what I mean? Doesn't make much sense. But overall, I, uh, I'm going to give it an A tier. I think uh, this is one time where uh, I really want to separate them because I think Pikachu's A, but Raichu's an S. And you know what? This is my tier list. I'm going to do that. I think it's one of those times where, like, the this, this separation's a little different, mostly because they like to treat them a little differently. But I think I'm not alone in this. But Raichu, he looks cooler. He's more useful in game. And I just prefer him over Pikachu. Sorry, Pikachu. You're not bad, but not being able to evolve to Raichu is just a big step down. Not that he, he can, obviously, or she, depending on what Pikachu you got. But. The versions, the variants that can't are like, what's, I mean, yeah, you can cosplay, that's neat, but Raichu's still better, sorry, just because you can surf doesn't mean that you can, you're can. you better than Raichu, Raichu can surf now too, so eh, <laughs> oh my goodness, Sandstone and Sand Slash, I don't think I've ever used them in game, but they're pretty generic, uh, Sand it's ground type Pokemon, it's one of those back, backlog, po backlog Pokemon, like I'll use them one day, 
but I think their design's okay. Nothing too special, but I'll put them in B tier. Just because. Maybe C. Yeah, I'll put them in C. Put them by Nick and Zarbuck. We got the Ninorans, and this is one of those things where I'm like, where with everyone else, I think Nitto King is cooler than Nitto Queen and way more useful. Especially in the earlier generations, it is a powerhouse, and it's that they can learn on the moves. Not that Nitto Queen's bad, but design wise and stat wise, it just it's one sided. So we're going to give a Nitto King the A tier, the, that family. And we'll give the Nitto Queen line the B tier. Not that they're bad, but. I think they're, they are a little step down, if you ask me. Uh, yeah, here is the next line. We got the Clefairy line. This is one I'm actually personally biased towards. I like them. They can learn a lot of moves. They're pretty sturdy. Metronome is a really fun move to use. They're like a better version of Jigglypuff in every way. I like Jigglypuff as a, as a uh, out of the games more than I like Jigglypuff in games. Not that that one's bad, but uh, Clefairy is definitely better than Jigglypuff. It's a uh, designs is okay. I think it, it works, but Clefable is very lazy evolutionary design. It gets taller and has bigger wings. Sorry, Game Freak, not your best game design, but some of these Generation One evolutions are kind of crappy, if we're being honest. But we haven't really. I mean, I've just described some of them, but we'll get to some of them later on. Here's a Vulpix and Nine Tails. I think they're interesting Pokemon, and they've recently gotten better, I believe. But the uh, alone versions are actually better looking, in my opinion. Ninetales is cool looking, but Vulpix, I was like, eh, it's just okay. It, it's always been the weaker Pokemon to the uh, Growlithe, which is its alternate. You can get in the other generations. Not that it's bad. I don't think I've ever used it, though. Mostly because I had Fire Red, but I think it's a solid B tier. It is still cool looking, and its alone form is pretty cool. Jigglypuff and Wigglytuff are hard to rank because in game I think they're okay. I've used them and they feel like a worse version of Clefairy and Clefable. Though they are more unique looking. I think Clefairy is a good design, but the fact that Clefable looks exactly like Clefairy is a minus point design. Well, Wigglytuff actually looks like an evolved form of the Jigglypuff. You know what I mean. Jigglypuff is iconic in Smash and the anime, but in game it is just okay. And for that, I like it a lot in those other media, but I gotta rank it right here, mostly because I felt when using in game, it lost a little bit of respect. Uh, this is gonna be a harder Pokemon to rank because the uh, this is one of the Pokemon we got get to that actually Megas and forms like okay they're neat, but they don't really change that much of the Pokemon. But uh, third evolution to a Pokemon later on does change a lot. And this is the example for Zubat and Golbat, because Crobat is amazing. These guys aren't bad either, but Crobat is an easy S tier. But do we count the Crobat? Because Crobat was air added later on and not originally intended for this. I'm looking at this through the lens of a Fire Red Let's Play, which you can't get Crobat until the after game, which is BS. I didn't know this because I never used it in my team, because I never wanted to use Zubat about Crobat. But apparently, Golbat has the right specifications for evolving the Crobat. It will actually incite the evolution animation, but then it'll just stop and have question marks, which is the biggest BS thing ever. If you were a Golbat user in Fire Red and have it happen, I am so sorry for you, and I cannot believe they put that in the game. I don't know why they couldn't just let it evolve. But either way, I think these Pokemon are pretty good. I know some people don't want to think they're good because they appear a lot. Being about Golbat, they're pretty good. They're very speedy. Zubat's a little frail. But once you get to Golbat, it should be able to take some more damage. And once you get to Crobat, it's a sweeper. The definition of a sweeper. It is super fast. It cuts down grass like a weed whacker. Amazing. But I'm going to give it a little bit over Jigglypuff. But like I said, uh, with Crobat, it's S tier. So this is a Pokemon that I have a little bias to for nostalgic purposes. Because I liked it as a kid. Even though I don't think it's that great anymore. This is the Oddish slash Vileplume line. And Vileplume is better than Blossom. I'm not a big fan of the split evolutions. They don't have a good reason. And Blossom felt like a weird reason. Why would you want to get rid of the, the poison typing? I do not understand that at all. But yeah, they're a little generic. Gloom's a pretty interesting looking Pokemon. But Vileplume has just, just a giant flower on his head. Okay, same flower that Venusaur is based off. In case you're wondering. But the original sprites look awful for it. Because they try to show its face and the flower. But they, they always fail to do so. It's really funny. I like Pokemon. But it's not that great. I think it's like here. I do like it though. It's not a bad grass type Pokemon. I think it's a little underrated. But it's not amazing. 
Oh, here we go. Here's the uh, Pokemon that I feel kind of bad for, but I'm putting it in F tier because its typing is so bad in its stats that it has to be in F tier. Paris and Parasect, Grass and uh, Bug Poke type is an awful combination, meaning it has a quad weakness to fire and flying and a bunch of other weaknesses and doesn't have much resistances at all. It's just not a good typing combination at all. And it's so frail and it can't really do much. You can learn a lot of HMs, which is good for it, but... And plus, Parasect is technically dead and the mushroom's sticking over, which is kind of creepy. It's not a bad concept for Pokemon. In fact, it's I think it's pretty interesting. But at the same time, that typing in its staff is so bad that they can't be anywhere but F. Like, you're never going to want to use this Pokemon, and I'll probably never use it. I've actually used it as an HM slave, but that's pretty much about it. We got Venonat and Venomoth. Now, Venonat looks pretty cool and looks very similar to Butterfree. Now, Venomoth looks pretty crappy, and I don't think it even has, doesn't even have resistance to ground Pokemon, because I don't think it has the ability to levitate, because it's like a bug poison Pokemon. I think they're pretty okay. I'll put them in D tier. Nothing too great. I feel like uh, evolution of Venomoth that makes looks like Venonat. So like, uh, I think we all know about the uh, the Caterpie Butterfree Venonat situation, where it looks like they swapped, which is a possibility, I guess. But yeah, the Venomoth I just thought doesn't look like a good Pokemon, and yeah, I don't have much else to say. Plus, I don't think it's an easier po easy Pokemon to get for our. Uh, Inefficient it is. Now we got Diglett and Duck Trio, a very memed on Pokemon, mostly because of how uh, what the hell is under the rocks. Now Diglett's a pretty good Pokemon, and so is Duck Trio. The biggest problem with this is one of those Generation One quirks where I don't know who they don't do this in later generations. I don't think. Well, I guess they did because they brought back Diglett <laughs> twice. But uh, no, this is one of those things where uh, here we have Diglett and Duck Trio. What should we do for Diglett evolution? Uh, I don't know, two more Diglets on it. There you go, that's a good evolution there. And, uh, yeah, I really don't understand the, uh, idea behind that. But other than that, I think they're, they're pretty iconic, and I, I, I kind of like them. They're pretty good in game. They're really fast, so I'm gonna give them a little A tier, because I've used them before. We got Meowth in Persian. These are classic Pokemon, mostly you know her being in the anime. They're not too bad in game, even though I don't think I've ever used them. But... Yeah, they're pretty okay. Nothing about them stands out that much to me. They're one of those, I like it, but not, I don't love it. You understand my drift? Maybe if I uh, used it in game, maybe I'll be better. But for now, I think they're, Meowth is pretty cool, but Persian, just okay. And there are other alternate forms are just weird looking. But those are those guys. Oh my god, we still got a lot of Pokemon left. We got Psyduck and Golduck. Both of which are not psychic Pokemon, despite the fact that they seem like they would be psychic Pokemon, but whatever. They're alright. Uh, I think I've used... Yeah, I used them. They're just okay. Um, I'll give them a little bit of a, a B tier, because I like their designs. And Psyduck's pretty awesome. Sang! Sang duck! But they're nothing too noteworthy. A lot of the problems with some water types are never going to be that interesting, especially when they have one type, because there's so many Pokemon. Next, we got Mankey, or Monkey, and Primeape. Other than the Primeape having a really lame design, these are pretty good fighting-type Pokemon, especially early on in the game. They're, an, always, they're always ones I hate relying on as a Charmander user, because I don't like them that much, but I do like them. I don't know, they're kind of weird. I'll give them a B tier. I just don't like how generic Primeape looks compared to Mankey. It's cool and all, but... It's one of those things, like, if I want to use a Charmander, I wish I don't have to rely on using a Prime Mankey to fight Brock in Generation 1. If you know what I mean, or in Pokemon Yellow, I have to catch one of these. I'd rather catch <laughs> Nidoran, but you can only do that in Pokemon Yellow. Why is it not in Fire Red and Leaf Green beginning of the game? Don't ask me. Ask developers. So there's a Pokemon I didn't really use that much, mostly because of the uh, fact that I use Fire Stars a lot in my early playthroughs. I don't do that as much anymore because I learned how to choose other stars that aren't fire because I was a dumb kid. Anyway, Growth and Arcanine are ones that are very, very popular for everybody, but because I don't have that nostalgic or the uses as much, I don't like them as much, even though I think they are pretty cool. They're actually going to get an A tier here because they are pretty cool. They are pretty good, 
but I don't have that nostalgic for them as much as everyone else. And because everyone likes them so much, I was like, eh, I want to be outcast to say that I like them, but they're not the best Pokemon out there. You know, they kind of are. I'm just stupid. Let's just say that. Here's a Pokemon I really liked as a kid, and my bias as a kid brings out Poliwag Family. I thought it was really cool. You know, I don't think I... Yeah, I did use them on one team, but that was a long time ago. Maybe I should use them again. I always thought they were cool looking. The little swirl. Some people do. Some people like Poliwhirl over Poliwrath, oddly enough, but I can get it. Poliwrath kind of sucks his design. Poliwag, okay, we get arms and stuff. Poliwrath, he's an anger version of Poliwhirl. He is water fighting, so you got that. That's pretty cool. So, uh, but I still like him. I like him enough, enough to be a master, to be honest. Like, I, just, I don't know why. I just have that feeling. Because I'm weird. Here's another great Pokemon. Abra sucks because teleport and he's hard to train. But when you give him Kadabra, awesome. However, I give him Alexam and got a trade. Now I hate the trade evolutions. I think a lot of us do. Especially since you're like, like me, you don't really have any friends. You knew you had two brothers, but you don't have any friends. And even then, is trading just, it can be a little, it's more annoying than it has to be. It always has been more of a hassle. Just set up. But yeah, no, this is a, uh, th these guys are really good. I've used them. They're fast and hard-hitting psychic Pokemon. There's not much to say. Everyone knows about these guys. They're really good. And, uh, yeah, bend those spoons. Here's the Machop line. Machop, Machoke, and Machamp. I don't really like the fact that Machoke is choking people out, but, hey, we got the Champ. And the Champ is awesome. Anyway. Uh, these guys are pr a little slow, but they are hard hitting. I think they're okay. They're they're like a B tier, maybe. We'll uh, we'll put them mm, put them right there. I like them, but I prefer, I'm more of a uh, I like faster Pokemon personally, and I like there's a lot of fighting Pokemon that are are a little more interesting. They're kind of weird looking in a weird way. Like Machop Chop looks a little weird, but when you really think about it, like why do they look like that? It's one of those things you try not to think about, but at the end of the day, you do think about them because, you know, why not? Here is the uh, other grass poison Pokemon, Bellsprout, Weeping Bell, and Victory Bell. Not bad, but Weeping Bell is a really weird design. It's like a Bellsprout, but without the lim limbs, and then Victory Bell it just is, is a neat Pokemon. They're kind of derpy looking. They're like a worse version of Oddish to me. I would personally always prefer the Eidush Violent Plume line, but I don't know, that's just me. Uh, they're like a C, C tier. Uh, put them like right there, I think. They're interesting looking, but they're not like great or anything. Uh, I know some people really like Tentacle and Tentacruel. I have not used them. I haven't really seen that many of them out in a while, but they are really annoying to battle whenever you find a trainer with these. They always seem to get the poison on you. They always poison you. That's not that's not good. I'll give them B tier. They're interesting looking, but like I said, I haven't used them. They have a neat design. But there's a lot of people who love these guys. Like they're good, so maybe I'll have to try them out. So there's Judude, Graveler, and Gollum. I don't like Gollum. It looks like he's like a bursting out of rock, like some different animal. While Judude and Graveler are just rock guys. That always bothered me. I don't know why. Does that does that bother anyone else? Now Graveler and Looks cool, and Gollum looks cool, even though he doesn't look like he fits in the evolutionary line. And Judo's iconic, but Judo is literally just a rock with arms. <laughs> it's kind of a crap design when you really think about it. But, uh, yeah, these guys are pretty well known. I think I'll give them a B tier. Uh, I'll put them there. They were, I used it, but they're, it's, they're, they hit hard, but they're slow. And, and a lot of those slow Pokemon, I'm just not a big fan. I like getting those hits out fast. They're, they're tanky. And if you like a tank rock, that's fine by me, but they're okay. Ponyta and Rapidash are pretty cool. I don't think I ever use them because they're later, and I don't usually, I don't usually use later po Pokemon, meaning Pokemon you get later in the game, as because by that point I would like to have a complete, more complete team. Though if you're in Generation Four and you chose and you didn't choose Chimchar, they're the only option for fire, which is lovely. They are a really cool idea, a horse on fire. And, you know, Rapidash has that horn. So they're nice. They, uh... I think I'm going to here. I haven't used them, but... Uh, where do I want to rank? I think I like them better than, uh, the Ninetale line. They're a little cooler. Here's Slowpoke and Slowbro. I have these as Slowking. These are pretty good. But Slowpoke 
And I don't think Bro is that great either. Uh, they're very slow. I said I didn't like slow Pokemon, but I think th these guys are a little more interesting. They have a new, more unique design. I think Slow King's a better design than Slow Bro, personally. But yeah, I think I'll give him a B tier. We'll see. We'll put him. We'll put him right there. Yeah. So here's another one where the third evolution would change it drastically because Magnezone is pretty awesome. I have used him. Magneton is not bad, but Magneton's another cr crappy design. This is actually one of the worst because he can do a lot. Magnite looks like he could do something pretty interesting, but I guess magnets all three attached. Ha ha ha! But they're not even attached by the magnets. This is terrible design. Magnezone is such a better design than Magneton. Uh, I do not like Magneton's design at all. It's probably worse than Doug Trio in a, in a weird way because Doug Trio is kind of meme worthy. Magneton just like you could have done a lot more with Magnemite. But I do like Magnemite a lot. It's a pretty cool Pokemon. But yeah, since I don't like Magneton's design, I'm actually going to give it a, a D tier. Yeah. Magnemite's getting an A, and Magneton's in D tier. And I don't care. Farfetch sucks. He gets better stuff in later games, but since we're not counting those, and the one where he evolves is not even really a Farfetch, it's like a different version, we're not counting this guy. This Farfetch doesn't get counted. He sucks. He gets evolution, sure, but Farfetch is a crappy normal flying type Pokemon. That's a one stage. Now, the other ones have more than one stage because you need that to get better stats. He starts off with generic stats and can't get better than that. He has a piece of leak. He has a leak. That's it. A, a vegetable. You can only eat his weapon. And he's angry all the time. Screw you, ducks. Anyway, speaking of actually good normal flying Pokemon, we have Dodo and Dredria, which I'm immediately putting up here. Uh, right, right here. Uh, they are really good, especially in Generation 3, where they can use the Tri-Attack, and it will be a physical attack, which is great for them. They have great, a lot of great physical attack. I think they're really interesting looking Pokemon. Like, they have a nice design. Two heads to three heads. I know it's kind of ridiculous, but hey, at least they look unique for each one. Each evolution. And they're really good at attacking. They have a good attack stat. They're a great alternate flyer to a Pidgeot. Not as good as Pidgeot, in my opinion, but I still think they're pretty good. Ah, uh, here we go. Seal and Dugong. These guys get an F tier because they are so bland and nobody talks about them. Also, Dugong, when it evolves, when Seal evolves, Seal's also a terrible name. It loses some of its unique characteristics, like its mouth here, and that's it. What a terrible evolution. And Water Nice is not that type, but the fact that they're one of those Water Pokemon where you have to get them under certain circumstances and they're later in the game, they're so bland looking. It's one of those Pokemon that no one talks about. They barely have a presence in the anime anywhere. They're just so lame. Rhymer and Muck. Now, Muck's given the middle finger here, which is lovely. Uh, Muck's also a pretty bad evolution when you think about it, because look at it. There's Grimer, here's Muck. Yeah. Uh, but they're not terrible. I actually don't think they're bad at all. I'll give them a nice B tier. I don't got much to say about them, but I just think they're funny. Shelter and Cloyster. Cloyster looks like a Ghastly, and Glass is right next to him. Interesting. I never thought these were that interesting. Water and Ice, not bad typing, but they're one of those, eh, who cares? <laughs> I, I just know I just don't care. I don't know why they don't ring me as a poke like so there's a lot of water Pokemon and a, a, a clam is not one of those I'm jumping for joy to, to use in game. Alright, we have an S tier Pokemon here. All the way up there. We got Gengar, Haunter, and Ghastly, the only ghost Pokemon in Generation 1. And they are super cool. I love Gengar's design. Haunter also has a really cool design. Uh they're super useful. They Gengar can learn a lot of different moves. They can like fuck with your opponent a lot, with how many stuff it can, how much stuff it can do. Unfortunately, it's one of those trade Pokemon, which, which sucks. But he's a great design. The typing could be a little better because I don't know why they decided to give it Poison type. I don't know if there's something really poisonous about it, but it takes a little more advantage of that in later generations. And it's just one of those Pokemon that I love to use because of its versatility, and it is a fun Pokemon. I love Gengar. Alright, next we got Onyx. Now, Onyx is not a bad Pokemon, though Steelix does add a little bit to him. But I'll give him a nice little, uh, I'll give him an A tier. He's pretty cool. Nice rock ground snake. He's a little better in Generation 2. We can get him earlier, and he can evolve. Drowsy Nymph. Now, I did use both these Pokemon. They're a pretty crappy psychic Pokemon. Not very good. 
Uh, so, yeah, they go right there. Plus, Hypnose of Creep. So, yeah, I don't like... Actually, yeah, we, we, we don't like Creepers. Get down there. Also, Shelter and Cloister. I don't like you guys. Suck suck that. Also, Venom off you suck. You're going to eat here. There we go. Uh, Krabby and Kingler are some of the most generic... Kingler at least has a giant claw, but Krabby... His name is Crab. He's literally a crab. Sucks. Kingler's a little cooler, so we'll put him in D tier. Actually, I'll give him a C tier. How about that? This is one of those things where, like, yeah. Do you, anyone, do you know anyone that has one of these Pokemon? Probably not. They're super interesting. Like, it's a, it's a crab. Why do they do that? Voltorb and Electrode, I think, are kind of interesting because they're mimicking a Pokemon, but at the end of the day, they are really lazy designs. They did more too distinct that pokeball like blending in like the layer pokemon like was it fungus among us among us uh, did it would have been more interesting but you know i think that it was interesting they brought them back and the other ones and they're really fast they're not terrible i actually don't mind them but they're like a they're like a b tier and they're really i kind of like them but i can see why else people don't like them because they are kind of stupid execute is literally a couple eggs or they're seeds i don't know and they evolve into this tree not a terrible Pokemon, but yeah, they'll get like a, a C tier because I don't care for them that much. Alone Executor is pretty hilarious. It's a little buff up Executor because he is cooler, but Execute, they suck. Here we got Kibo and Marowak, a pretty dark Pokemon. Like, his name's Orphan, I think. Is that is that a thing? I swear his, nick, his name in Japan is Orphan, but I could be wrong on that. But uh, yeah, here is Cubone. Cubone and Marowak are pretty cool. I think the Alolan version of Marowak is cooler. But uh, I'm going to put them right here. Pure Ground. I feel like they should have that alternate typing based off how weird they are, their backstory is. But hey, you, know, you never know. So Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan are definitely on the same family line. Pokey line, I should say. But their pre-evolution doesn't exist. So they're not really connected right at this moment. Hitmonlee is... It's pretty neat. I like Hitmonlee a lot. I don't know why it's about him. That is pretty cool. And I think I'll put him like like here. And then Chan, I think it looks a little dumber. Not dumber, but lamer. He's not bad, but I don't care for him as much. You can go right, right under, uh, right there. Yeah. Lickitung. He has a really crappy evolution, and uh, he licks, and he's does. I don't. I know there's a lot of weird stuff about this Pokemon, like pictures related to this guy, but other than that, like, like who uses this Pokemon? Seriously. Yeah, I'll give him a, I'll give him a C. How about that? Coughing and Weezing are pretty cool. Look, pretty cool guys. We'll give him. Uh, put them top of B. They're pretty neat. Plus, they have a really cool shiny form. A nice tanky poison type Pokemon. They're much better than the other pure poison type Pokemon in this game. Since they're better, they have better design and they have more usage. Rhyhorn and Rhydon are actually not bad Pokemon. Rhydon is a little cooler than Rhyhorn. We'll give them that. Uh, they're they're definitely really cool. I, I'm, I'm gonna put them up here. They're really cool. They're really nice. They're a little slower. They're on the slow side, but they have a lot. They're very tanky. Like, very good. I mean, Chansey is just is, is a great T HP person. Give me all give me all your XP, Chansey. But at the end of the day, it is just a Chansey. It's not Blissey. Chansey's good, but yeah, it's not the best one in the game. Tangela, it doesn't evolve in this game, which makes it just a weird blue noodle Pokemon. E. Kangaskhan is pretty cool. It's normal type. A lot of normal type Pokemon. Uh, it has a little baby. It could mega evolve into a broken Pokemon. But it's a kangaroo, and I like kangaroos a lot, so we'll give them a B tier. Horsey and Cedra are neat. It's a seahorse Pokemon. It's one of the better fishing Pokemon, and it can evolve to Kingdra, which is nice, but since it can't evolve to Kingdra in this game, we'll just give it a B tier. Though I really do like the design a lot. So, uh, Golding and Seeking, they aren't very interesting. They're fish, really just fish. And also, Sea King is sinking, because that's how much Sea King sucks. Also, uh, Goldeen is some reason the Pokemon in Smash Bros. that splashes, even though Magikarp is the one that's known for doing that. Does that make any sense? No. So just for that, I'm giving it an E tier, since this is one of those Pokemon that I just never cared for. But Star, you and Star, me? 
aren't too bad. They're pretty cool looking. And they have the psychic type. Why? I don't know, but they uh they get they get an AA tier. Right there. Mr. Mime is one of the Pokemon that like what is this design? What is it? I know it's not bad, but uh, I don't like that D. Scyther is cool. A. <laughs> Scyther also evolves into Scissor. That's kind of a lame explanation. But yeah, that's one of the reasons. That's the uh, the Pokemon I gave it there. I came to speak. Jinx is not a bad Pokemon, but its design is pretty bad. So we'll give it a C tier right, right there. No, right there. Electabuzz is an S tier Pokemon. Electabuzz is awesome. It'll actually be up here. Look at that. I like the buzz. Evolution's even better, but hey, it's not hidden here, so it just stays there. Magmar is also pretty cool, but it also doesn't have its evolution. But hey, we'll give him a nice little. I'll put him right there. I like Magmar and I like the buzz. They're cool, underrated. Pinsler, not bad, but not anything to write home about. We'll put him right there. Tauros, I think he's kind of generic. A lot of people like him, but I'm not one of those people. There. Magic Carp. Uh, do I rate it with Gyarados or not? Because Magic Carp's completely. I think Magic Carp's a really funny Pokemon. It suck is terrible in games. So it definitely should be F. But at the same time, it can evolve into Gyarados. So we'll put it right next to Gyarados. Cause Gyarados is awesome. Gyarados is S tier. We'll put it right there. And Magic Carp is right behind it. Gyarados is amazing, and it's actually fun to evolve, try to get your little Magic Carp to evolve into Gyarados. I mean, come on, Magic Carp's iconic, and Gyarados is awesome. Lapras is not a bad Pokemon. We'll give it an A tier. I like I said it's on the Pokemon I've used a lot, but it's one of those I recognize. That's a cool design and it's a good Pokemon. Ditto is kinda of weird to rank. It is fun concept and it's fun in other media, but in the game it's it's a move doesn't really give you that much to work with. It kinda of sucks. But I got you gotta love it. We'll put it right here it's cause Eevee is another Pokemon that you gotta give S tier. We'll actually put it right there. Because it can evolve into other Pokemon. Though I only think one of these is other is S tier as well, which is Jolteon, for obvious reasons. Vaporeon is an easy A tier. It actually goes right there. Well Flareon sucks. I hate Flareon. One, it's a really lame design, and it's not very it's physical fire attacker, I believe, which makes it not very good. Porygon is a Pokemon that I always thought had a cool design, and I never used it because you had to pay like a million dollars to get it, but we'll put it top of B tier. Oh My Knight is our Lord and Savior, so it gets to go right there. And there's Oma Star. They're pretty neat, but overall, not the best. And Kabuto, we'll put him like right next to it because I don't really see, there's not much difference, I don't feel like, in those guys. Aerodactyl is super cool and awesome. And he gets to go right here. I mean, it's a Snorlax. Snorlax, he's, he's the, the fat guy. We all love, we all know him. He's a big tank. He'll rest, he'll sleep on it, but he'll get back up and he'll do a body slam. And yeah, Snorlax, you're you're amazing. You, get up, you, go, you go up there. Now we have the three legendary birds. Zapdos is an S tier because Zapdos is amazing. Articuno is, I would say it's like right here. I like it, but I don't love it. And Moltres is, uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll put Moltres like right there. It's okay. Nothing great. The Dragonair, Dragonite line, they're pretty fun to use, but they take a while to learn level up. But at the same time... It is fun to use. That doesn't make any sense, Kyle. Then put them above Aerodactyl, but they are pretty cool. They get rid of the blue for orange. We'll do Mewtwo last. Mew is pretty adorable, and it can learn every move in the game. So that's, it's amazing. And Mewtwo is literally one of the coolest Pokemon ever made. And he goes right up there. And that is every Generation 1 Pokemon ranked. From my personal opinion, I know not everyone else will have this opinion, but it's just my opinion. You can go rank this in the description below. I'll link this Zack tier list to you guys. And yeah, before we go, we're going we're gonna to list all the Pokemon in order. Because why not? F tier, we got Farfetch, Seal, Dugong, Paris, Parasect, Flareon, E tier, Krabby, 
Golding, Seeking, Venom Moth, Spiro, Fiero, Tangela, D tier, Mr. Mime, Magneton, Shelter, Cloister, Venomat, Drowsy, Hypno, Ratta, Eradicate, C tier, Kingler, Jinx, Look at Tongue, Sandshrew, Sandslash, Bellsprout, Weeping Bell, Victory Bell, Tauros, Atkins, Arbok, Caterpie, Metapod, Butterfree, Execute, Meowth, Persian, B tier, Execute, Grimer, Muck, Voltar, Electro, Geodude, Graveler, Golem, Tentacle, Tentacruel, Hit him on, Hit him on Lee, Vulpix, Ninetales, Chansey, War, uh, Ponyta, Rapidash, Mudchop, Mudchoke, Mudchamp, Cubo, Marowak, Psyduck, Golduck, Ditto, Moltres, Horsey, Seedra, Oddish, Gloom, Vileplume, Slowpoke, Slowbro, Kabuto, Kabut, Tops, Omanite, Omastar, Neran Female, Nerina, Nail Queen, Mankey, Prime, Articuno, Weedle, Kakuna, Beedrill, Paris, Kingshon, Coughing, Weezing, Porygon, A tier, Lapras, Scyther, Onyx, Staryu, Starmie, Rhyhorn, Rhydon, Magnemite, D Diglett, Dictrio, Hitmonlee, Aerodactyl, Dratini, Dragonair, Dragonite, Jigglypuff, Wigglytuff, Growlithe, Arcanine, Mew, Magmar, Zubat, Golbat, Abra, Kadabra, Alakazam, Snorlax, Vaporeon, Ninoran Male, Ninorino, No King, Pikachu, S tier, Poliwag, Poliwhirl, Poliwrath, Duo Duo, Dodrio, Zapdos, Magikarp, Gyarados, Left Buzz, Clefairy, Clefable, Raichu, Peach, Pidgey, Pidgeotto, Pidgeot, Eevee, Jolteon, Mewtwo, Ghastly, Haunter, Gengar, Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, Venusaur, Squirtle, Warturtle, Blastoise, Charmander, Termillion, and Charizard. Oh boy, that was a lot. Thank you for watching, and uh, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below. I know you'll disagree with me, but hey, make your own ranking, and we'll compare.